Today we are going to talk about significant figures. Significant figures are the digits within a number that are considered reliable as a result of a measurement or a calculation. Now why are significant figures important? Believe it or not, they were not invented by your physics or your calculus teacher or chemistry teacher to torture you. Significant figures are actually very important in engineering. As engineers, we work with numbers daily. We're often taking measurements or setting the specifications for a design. In either case, engineers must consider significant figures because when we measure something, the reported measurement should reflect what was actually measured. And when we are designing and building, we want our designs to have the appropriate amount of precision. So what do I mean when I say precision? So to describe precision, let's look at these targets here. And let's say that we are measuring something that's actual value is in the bullseye of that target. So in this first example, I take six measurements and they land let's say all around here. Well these measurements are not hitting the bullseye, so they're not very accurate. In addition, they're spread out, so they're really not repeatable. In the second example, maybe I take six measurements and they all land right here. Well again, those measurements are not accurate, they're not landing in the bullseye, but they are repeatable. If I were to take a seventh measurement, more than likely it's going to land right there. So it's repeatable, but it's not very accurate. Now in the third example, I take six measurements, and let's say they land all around there. Well, if I take the average of those six measurements, it's probably pretty close to that bullseye. So in a sense, those measurements are accurate, they're just not really repeatable. Because if I were to take another measurement, a seventh measurement, we don't know whether it's going to land over here or over here. We don't, it's not really repeatable. In this final example, let's say I take the six measurements and they all land right here on the bullseye. So in this case, the measurements are now accurate. They're landing on the bullseye and they're repeatable. If I were to make a seventh measurement, more than likely it's going to land right there in the bullseye. So this combination of accuracy and repeatability is what we mean by something being precise. And significant figures tell us how precise a measurement is. The more significant figures we have, we are, the more precise a measurement is. So when we measure something, it really can only be as precise as the measuring tool that we are using and really the person who is taking the measurement. So if I have this book here and I tell you that the width is, let's say, 14.2 centimeters and the height of that book is 20.1 centimeters. Well, with this ruler here, these measurements are reasonable. I can measure to that level of precision. However, if I were to tell you that the width of this book is, let's say, 14.2104 centimeters, and maybe the height of that book is 20.0983 centimeters, um, I'm re essentially measuring something, or telling you I'm measuring something that's not really possible with this ruler. So I can't measure to this level of precision with this measuring device. So we don't want to report the, these digits out here. We don't want to report the, the digits in the thousands or the ten thousands place because they're not significant. If we report them, we're implying that we have measured to a precision that we haven't measured to. If you actually need to report to this, these places out here, you're going to need a much more expensive measuring tool than this ruler. So in measuring, when we increase the precision, we typically increase the cost because the measuring tool needs to be more precise and we will most likely need to take more time to make the measurement and obviously time is money. 
Significant figures are also important in design. When an engineer sets the specification for a product to be manufactured, they want to give the precision necessary, but not overstate it. For example, let's say we're asked to make 100 cookies that are 2 inches in diameter, okay, to fit in, say, a 2 inch wide plastic sleeve. I can make the cookies and after they're baked, use this ruler to measure them. Now, some cookies might be 2 inches in diameter, others may be 2.1 inches or 1.9 inches, but all these would be considered good. Now, if a cookie came out and had a 3 inch diameter, we would scrap it. That would not be a good cookie. However, if we're asked to make 100 cookies that are, let's say, 2.000 inches in diameter, that is a completely different animal. In that case, we actually need a different measuring device. So we're going to have a different measuring device that's going to cost more money. And it's probably going to take a lot longer to measure to that precision. And undoubtedly, I will have a lot more waste. Because if I'm trying to make a cookie that's 2.000 inches in diameter, if I make one that's, say, 2.1 inches in diameter, it's going to be waste. Even if it's 2.05 inches in diameter, it's now waste. Or even, let's say, 2.009 inches in diameter, that's still waste. Now, all of these cookies would have been good if we were only making them to 2 inches in diameter. But if I set my specification to 2.000 inches in diameter, all three of these cookies now become waste. Now, if you're the person getting to eat the waste, this might not be a bad thing. But if you're the engineer responsible for providing 100 cookies, this is definitely not a good thing. It's going to take a lot longer to make 100 cookies with a 2.00 inches in diameter than 100 cookies that are just 2 inches in diameter. And certainly there's going to be a lot more scrap. So the cost of making just one good cookie just went up exponentially. In fact, whether we're measuring something or manufacturing, every time that we increase the precision that is needed, the cost increases. So as engineers, it's important that we don't overstate what precision we need. If you do, you're only increasing the cross cost and decreasing the competitiveness, your competitiveness, in the market. While we don't want to overstate precision, we do want to have sufficient precision for a given application. So let me give you an example that maybe you can relate to. Let's say you are home on a Saturday night, bored out of your mind. You get on social media and you happen to see that a couple of your friends, your buddies, are out having a good time. So what do you do? You pull out your phone and you text them and you say, Hey, where are you? I want to come join you. Well, your first friend texts back and says, We're somewhere downtown. The second friend texts back and says, We're at some street corner. So now you know that they're downtown and they're on a street corner, but with that information, you probably cannot determine exactly where they are. The information is not precise enough. So while we don't want to overstate precision when we're designing, we want to provide sufficient pre precision so that a design can be built to meet the needs. So how do we know what digits are significant when we're reading or reporting the number. Well, there's three pretty simple rules for significant figures. First of all, all non-zero digits are significant. So then we have to deal with the zeros. Well, zero becomes significant if it's between two non-zero digits. So for example, four is 107. The zero here is between a four and a seven between two non-zero digits so this zero is significant, and this number has three significant digits. A zero is also significant if it's a terminal zero with a decimal point. So here we have 470 with a zero, uh, decimal point at the end. So this zero is a terminal zero, but it has a decimal point, so it is significant, and there is three significant digits in that number. The zero might come after the decimal, as in this case, 4.8. 70. So it's still a terminal zero, 
but it's in a number with a decimal place, after the decimal place, so this zero is also significant, and this number has three significant digits. Now, a zero is not significant if it's a leading zero before the first non-zero digits. So, in this case, we have 0 0.0478. There are two zeros that occur before the first non-zero digit. So those two zeros are not significant. They're essentially placeholders. If we did not have this zero and we only wrote 0.478, that's not the same number. So we need that zero here as a placeholder, but it's not significant. So this number here only has three significant digits. The other time the zero is not significant is if it is a terminal zero and there's no decimal place. So here we have 460, there's no decimal place, so this zero is not significant. So let's look at some examples. 679. There's three non-zero digits, no zeros, so this number has three significant digits. The next one is the same value, 679, but in this case we have a terminal zero. There is a decimal place, decimal point, so even though it's a, there is a zero, it's a terminal zero with a decimal point, so there are four significant digits. In the next example, 6,709, we have three non-zero digits. We have one zero that comes between two non-zero digits. So this zero is significant. So I have one, two, three, four significant digits. In my next example, I have three non-zero digits, a leading zero, nothing, no non-zero digits ahead of it, so this zero is not significant. So I only have one, two, three significant digits. The next example, we have 0 0.0562. So I now have two zeros that come before the first non-zero digit. So these zeros are not significant. Now, I still need this zero there, because if I didn't, again, I would have 0.562, which is not the same number. So it is a placeholder. It's needed, but it's not considered a significant digit. So again, I only have three, one, two, three significant digits. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. 344,000. In this case, I have three non-zero digits, and then I have three terminal zeros. There's no decimal point, so these three zeros are not significant. So I only have one, two, three significant digits. The next number is the same value as this, but in this case, I have a decimal point and one, two, three, four, five terminal zeros. All five of those zeros are now significant. So I have five zeros plus three non-zeros digits, or eight significant digits. My next example is 20,020. In this case, I have two non-zero digits. Then I have two zeros that come between non-zero digits. So these two zeros are significant. And then I have a terminal zero. There's no decimal place, so this zero is not significant. So I have one, two, three, four significant digits. In this example, I have one, two, three, four non-zero digits. I have one zero that comes between two non-zero digits, so this zero is significant. And then I have two leading zeros. There's no non-zero digit in front of them, so these two are not significant. So I have one, two, three, four, five significant digits. Now, if you want some practice, you can go on Blackboard, and under the extra practice section, there are some, a quiz that you can take to give yourself some practice on significant figures.